Hello. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Carol Parsons, Minister of Pastoral Care at First Presbyterian Church of Littleton in Colorado. For the second time in as many months, I have the blessing of wrapping up a preaching series. And so I wonder, am I getting a reputation as a closer? Might be too soon to tell. Through Advent and now into Christmas, we've been exploring the theme of the present of presence, the gift of God in and around us and through us and through others, and of course, through Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. In those past recent weeks, I hope that becoming more aware of the nuances of the present of God has added a positive dimension or two to your spiritual journey. And today, on this first Sunday of Christmas, by the grace of God, I'm hopeful that we can explore the presence of God by looking for God wherever we're at. A quote from the Baseball Hall of Famer, Yogi Berra, comes to mind. Yogi, who died in 2015, was one of the greatest catchers who ever lived. He played 19 seasons with the New York Yankees and was instrumental in taking them to 10 World Series championships. He also had a unique, paradoxical way with words. Among his yogiisms are, it's like deja vu all over again. When you get to the fork in the road, take it. Baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. And my favorite, and especially for us today, you can see a lot just by looking. You can see a lot just by looking. In today's Gospel reading, Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus have gone from their home in Nazareth up to Jerusalem to the temple to do some of the things that are required by faithful and obedient Jews after the birth of a child. And at the temple, they meet two prominent figures who have been looking for God's Messiah all their lives. And they too are pushing 90 or better. Listen to the word of God as we find it in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 22. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they, that's Mary and Joseph, brought him, baby Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. He would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. A light for salvation, or excuse me, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for joy 
to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord, so thanks be to God. This wonderful passage, which closes out the birth narrative, is chock full of faithful people. It begins by emphasizing Jesus's parents' faithfulness to God, and that's why they are where they are at the point in time when the passage begins. Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus in tow are at the temple in Jerusalem because of their obedience to God. The law of Moses, religious law, required that a woman after giving birth needed to be purified. Now that doesn't mean that the mother was considered dirty, but it means that the power of the blood of childbirth uh, was still with her, and that power had to be uh, mitigated uh, before she could return to the normal life in her community and, and worship fully again. It is a little in modern times, like when astronauts and perhaps workers in nuclear plants have to go through a certain re-entry process in order to return to society. The purification of a mother of a newborn son uh, took place 40 days after birth and for a daughter, 60 days. So Jesus here is still very much a baby, only about a month and a half old. And the sacrifice typically required is a lamb. Or in Mary and Joseph's case and others who could not afford a lamb, they could choose uh, two turtle doves or two pigeons, a less expensive sacrifice option. Perhaps, like me, you see the irony and wonder in their sacrifice when in fact they were carrying in their arms the one who would become the sacrifice to redeem the whole world through his very own body and blood. All these details are by way of underscoring the fact that Mary and Joseph are of humble means and completely obedient and faithful to God. Faithfulness continues and swells in our story in the person of Simeon, a man who has a deep and abiding relationship with God, a man who we are told the Holy Spirit rested on. Can you picture that? Can you feel that? The Holy Spirit rested on him 
It just simply, the Holy Spirit was hanging out with Simeon. Simeon, a man with a nearness to God, such that the Holy Spirit was probably for him a little like just a second skin, a pervasive presence in his being, in his everyday life. Simeon was a man who, like Yogi, like Yogi Berra, knew that you can see a lot just by looking. All his life, Simeon had been looking for God's Messiah, looking for the person who would free his people, Israel. The Holy Spirit had told him, in fact, that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And so Simeon kept looking. In fact, Simeon has made a life of looking for Jesus. So when the Holy Family enters the temple to do all that's required of them, presenting Jesus, purifying Mary, Simeon is there. He has been led by the Holy Spirit and his devotion of looking for Jesus. The next thing we know, Simeon takes the baby Jesus into his arms and praises God. Simeon's faithful looking enables him to recognize Jesus right off the bat. No explanations, introductions, questioning, or two forms of ID required. Simeon knows Jesus when he sees him because his attention and focus has been on looking for Jesus day by day, year after year for a lifetime. He seems to instinctively recognize Jesus without any reservations at all. How amazing that must have been, a lifetime of looking fulfilled. His recognition becomes an outpouring of praise uh, known as a song the song of Simeon. He thanks God for allowing him to see and receive Jesus who has come as promised to free not only Simeon's people, but all people everywhere. He then turns to Mary and Joseph and blesses them, tells Mary what her son is in for, the good and the bad, how he will change the world forever and will bring to Mary both joy and sorrow. The temporal picture continues to expand with the appearance of Anna, an elderly, faithful prophet, widow, and resident of the temple. She too has been looking for the long-awaited Messiah. She has kept herself poised to see by serving God, by fasting and praying in the temple day after day. Like Simeon, Anna too recognizes Jesus and what she sees and what she's been looking for and immediately praises God, then starts spreading the good news of Jesus to others who have been looking for Jesus. Both Simeon and Anna, I think, are just such wonderful models for us at this time. The great joy of seeing Jesus that is extravagantly described in our first reading. Isaiah spares no metaphors in foretelling the effects of seeing Jesus. Isaiah, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland. For Jerusalem, I will not rest until her vindication shines 
like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. That was then. So where is Jesus now? Where might we see Jesus now? We've celebrated Christmas, exchanged gifts, eaten so many delicious candies, cookies, and savory dishes, heard the awesome music and the amazing message. The Christmas tree is starting to drop its needles. Where is Jesus now? Psalm 139 reminds us that there is no place where we can go where God is not already present. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. And it goes on beautifully with the point being that God is everywhere, even in what are sometimes called God-forsaken places and situations. So maybe, just maybe, our question today and going into the new year of 2020-21 is not so much where do we see Jesus, but can we see Jesus where we're at? Can we see Jesus right where we're at? It's sort of the spiritual, if you will, where's Waldo? He's always there if we just keep looking. Anna and Simeon were looking for Jesus every day for years, many years. Perhaps the most important takeaway for us is that their faithfulness wasn't in where they were at, but in looking for Jesus where they were at. And what might we do when we see Jesus? We might do like Simeon and Anna and take Jesus into our arms, take that experience into our arms and give thanks, praise God, and tell all of our friends what we're experiencing and what can be found when we keep looking for Jesus where we're at whatever our circumstances. Yogi Berra tried to compliment the wife of the mayor of New York City concerning the ability of her to look so good on a very hot summery day by saying, you don't look so hot. Hot or not, we can rest assured that God in Jesus is with us and we can see him by looking for him wherever we might be in all the places and situations of the new year. Looking in the way of Simeon and Anna offers each of us, I think, a good spiritual practice to add to our spiritual toolbox, looking for and recognizing the present of presence in our daily lives wherever we are. And so my prayer for you and for me is that we'll continue to faithfully look for Jesus. Whatever we're going through, wherever we're at, for truly, you can see a lot just by looking. May we be intentional about looking for Jesus wherever we happen to be, He's there. Jesus is there as he said he would be. He's there. Look for him. Look for Jesus. Amen.